everybody, Maxwell Ventura, Realtor with Douglas Element, a part of the Disher Group. This is gonna be my third video on STROs, short-term residential occupancy. The main reason is to go over the frequently asked questions. So there's a lot of convoluted information out there. So I thought it'd be good to make a third video. And this will most likely be my last one prior to some new updates coming out, but this is gonna be all encompassing, frequently asked questions, three, two, one, go. So FAQ number one, what is a short-term residential occupancy, an STRO? It is defined as the occupancy of a dwelling unit for a month or less. So a month is classified as day one of any given month to the same calendar day the following month. So an example would be February 1st to March 1st, so anything less than that. But let's say you have, let's say the first occupancy uh, starts on January 31st. Well, there obviously is no February 31st, so they take the last calendar day of that month. So in that example, it will be February 28th. FAQ number two is what do I need to legally operate an STRO property? Well, if remember, if it's in the city of San Diego and you rent out your property for a month or less, then you need to obtain a, a TOT, transient occupancy tax certificate. And this is gonna apply whether you're renting out the entire house, a room, condo, etc. And additionally, property owners that are renting out for more than just six days in the calendar year, you're also responsible for remitting rental unit business tax. And for more information on the rental unit business tax and the transient occupancy tax, just go right to uh, San Diego's website, sandiego.gov. Number three, is there a fee to obtain a license? Yes, there is. It's gonna depend on the tier. So tiers one through four, you're gonna have an application fee uh, and then also the actual fee to obtain the license, which could range anywhere from $100 in tier one or $1,000 in tier four. And then FAQ number four, does the STRO ordinance apply to all zones, meaning the zoning designation? So the answer is yes whether it's a single family or an RM, residential multifamily, everything still applies all the same. Question number five, what is the difference between a home share and a whole home short-term residential occupancy? Pretty self-explanatory, the home share is when you, the property owner, are, this is your primary dwelling unit, it's owner-occupied, so you're either sharing a part of your home or it could be another unit that's still on the same lot. So think of like a duplex or an accessory dwelling unit versus the whole home short-term residential occupancy is if you are not living on the premises and you are renting out the entire space. Next, who can apply for an STRO license? So this is defined as a natural person who has the right to the dwelling unit, this could be the owner or even a lessee if they have permission. Now this next point is important. A host may only obtain one license at a time and may not operate more than one dwelling unit at a time uh, in the city of San Diego. Next is when can I apply for an STRO license? So applications are expected to start in the spring of this year, 2022 and licenses are expected to be issued before July 1st. Next is how does the lottery system work? So tiers three and four, which are whole home rental occupancies, meaning non-owner occupied investment properties, that's tiers three and four. So if sufficient demand exists, then we'll have to put in an application and then the applications are gonna be weighted and it's gonna go into a lottery system that is gonna be weighted based off of um, good actors, and there's a memo on the San Diego website which establishes exactly what that is, but essentially you need to be in compliance, you need to be up to date, there can't be any violations or codes on your property, you need to have a rental unit business account, uh, transient occupancy, uh, tax certificate, the whole nine yards. So that's essentially what a good actor is, and 
The lottery system is not a definite, it's only going to be if sufficient demand exists, which we don't necessarily have a number to that just yet. Okay, and so last is what type of units are restricted from being used as STROs? There's a couple of them. One is income restricted affordable housing. You have a student housing, dormitories, and also SRO buildings, which are single room occupancy buildings. These are all gonna be restricted from being used as short-term residential occupancy. So there's a lot more that I did not cover. If you have any more questions about the STRO, um, I have a handful of links that I can send you. There's the good actors memo, there's this frequently asked questions, there's the actual ordinance, which is a 49 page, it's the municipal code. Feel free to reach out to me. I'll send you all the information that you need. So if you have any more questions, reach out and I will talk to you soon. Hope this was of some value.